Hello, I'm Robin Worley, welcome to Lenscraft. At the weekend, I headed over to Stanage Edge in the Peak District near, near where I live, and I met one of my friends. Now, we went out to shoot some landscape scenes. Unfortunately, the weather was uh, grey, flat, dull, and you can see one of the images on the screen at the moment. And what I want to do in this video is to show you how I went from that image to that image which is a conversion I did in Nick Silver Effects Pro, Lightroom and a little bit of retouching in Photoshop. And it's going to be a slightly longer video than usual because I actually show you every step along the way and I'm not missing anything out. So keep watching to the end and you'll see how I create this image. We're going to start with the image in Lightroom. I'm in the develop module and this is the latest version of Lightroom that I'm using at the moment which is version 7.3. So a few things have moved around in here since uh, the previous version. One of those is the camera calibration. Now I used to advise setting the camera calibration straight away and it was always in the calibration tab. It's now moved, they've moved it up to the basic panel. What we're trying to do here is rather than using a standard Adobe Color Profile, I'm going to use one of the other profiles. But these are all Adobe ones now, so to get at it you need to use this profile browser. And once you're into the profile browser, you can actually find the original camera profiles. Now the one I want to go for is Provia Standard. Now that's because I'm shooting with a Fuji. Depending on the model of your camera, you're going to have different profiles here. If you're shooting with a Fuji, you'll also see the Provia. So I'm going to select that to start off with. And now I can close that grid. Now the next thing I'm going to do is rather than start to adjust the image, I'm going to start by correcting a couple of problems that I know are in here. The first one is I can see some cars on the horizon here. So I'm zooming in and I'm going to fix those now using the healing brush. So I can use this spot removal tool and you can use that either in clone or healing mode. And I'm going to start by trying it in the healing mode. Now what I can do is I can now size my cursor or my mouse pointer and I can set the feather on that. So I want a small feather and I also want a reasonable size so that I can make a selection of the car to repair. So that's the car I want to remove and straight away Lightroom tries to pick something to repair it with. Well I don't want it to repair it with a rock because there's a bit of road there and so instead I want to try and line up the road and make a repair. And that looks reasonable. Now I can pick the next car and I'll again remove that and I'll repair that again with another piece of road. And then I'll finally repair the van and again we'll pick another piece of road to repair that with. The other problem I've got here is that I know I've got a sensor spot up in the top right of the image. Now you can't see it at the moment because I've not applied any of the contrast adjustments that usually make it come out. Instead I'm going to use this visualize spots tool here and I can use that to adjust and hopefully help me visualize the spot and I can see it now here appearing. So again I've got the heel brush I can now size that heel brush so that I can cover it in more or less one adjustment. And again, Lightroom's picked that. If I turn off the visualize spots, I can see it's made a reasonably good repair there. Now, it may be later on when we make some adjustments that we'll see the spot come out, but at the moment, that looks like it should be okay. Now I'm going to actually return to treating the image and actually creating some of the adjustments that will bring this to life. So the first thing I can see is that it's quite a contrasty image. So I'm going to reduce down the contrast. Now the reason I do that is I'm going to add it later when we get into Silver Effects Pro for the conversion. What I'm trying to do at this stage is create an image that's got good tonal range, that is not too compressed into the highlights and also that it gives us a good starting point so I don't mind if it's lacking contrast. I'm probably also going to boost up some of the saturation in here and what that will do is it will give us a better colour response once we're into the uh, Nick Silver Effects Pro for the conversion. 
I'm going to start by changing the colour temperature and all I'm trying to do here is balance out the rocks a bit better because I don't want them to appear too blue because that will make them go dark when I darken the sky. Next thing is we have got quite a, a high peak here in the highlights which is this so I'm going to get that click it and drag it over. Now you may not have seen this before but you can actually manipulate the histogram and it will manipulate the sliders down here. Typically when you do that you lose some of the contrast in the sky and I want to keep that so I'm going to push the whites up a little bit further and the highlights down. Now the midtones don't look too bad we want to keep them sort of central there and we'll also open up the shadows just a little bit and that's opening up this area here. So overall that's looking quite good. I'm now going to come down and I'm going to go into the detail because I just want to apply some sharpness here just to check what the image is like and at the moment it's looking reasonably sharp I'm just going to reduce down the radius a bit and push up the detail and just a little bit of sharpness there and I'll probably also just push up the masking because what will be happening is there'll be emphasis of the noise in the sky if I don't do that I'm happy with that now so I'm going to go back to the basic tab and now I'm just going to add in a little bit of clarity and also a little bit of dehaze. Dehaze is one of the great sliders for landscape adjustments. It can really make the image pop. It effectively adds a lot of contrast adjustment in without harming the darks and the lights in the image. It's sort of a mid-tone contrast adjustment, a bit like clarity is. The other thing I notice is the sky is still a bit light and I really want to add a lot of pop into that area. I'm going to do that by selecting the sky and I'm using here the graduated filter to do that. Now at the moment the filter covers the sky and some of these rocks. If I show you with the mask you can see that and I don't really want that to happen. I want to actually remove the filter so that it just applies over the sky and I certainly don't want it applying over this trig point here. So I'm going to do that by zooming in onto the area. And now I'm going to use the brush tool and I'm going to use the erase setting. Now I'm going to need to increase the size of my brush and I'm just going to add in a little bit more feather adjustment into that. I've got the flow set to 100 so every time I make a brush stroke it will be at maximum strength and I also want to set this auto mask. Now what that's going to allow me to do is separate the sky from the, the ground so it's actually creating a mask as I paint that separates the two. So I'm just going to now paint over all this area so that we can create quite a nice clean edge to the image. Now it doesn't need to be perfect and we can actually clean it up again afterwards but the brush is making a pretty good job actually of selecting some of these areas. So I'm just going to get on with this and we'll show you the results when it's done. So I'm not doing anything here other than relying on the auto mask to create the mask and make the selection. So that's the basis of the adjustment done or the selection done. You'll notice I've left the distant hills because we'll bring those, they'll get a little bit more emphasis from this, we'll see how that goes. I also spilled over here, that's not too much of a problem, you won't notice later. Now the other thing I want to do is I'm now going to zoom out so that we've got the entire image and you can see there's a couple of areas here and here where I haven't actually made a good selection yet and that's because I've got the auto mask on. Now when you're using auto mask what it will tend to do is if there's an area within the area you paint over that's a bit different to where the centre of the brush is it will still leave it and you need to turn the auto mask off just resize your brush and then just go and clean up those areas. We've now got a good selection. I can turn off the mask 
and I can start to make a selection or an adjustment of the sky. So the first thing I'm going to do is up the contrast a little bit and I'm going to reduce the highlights but I'm going to push the whites up as well. One of the things that you'll start to see in a minute is that there was a lot of rays coming in through the clouds in the sky and you can't see that on the original and that's because I've been, oh, I was overexposing the image to try to capture detail in the shadow areas here. So that's a technique I use called exposing to the right and I use that because I shoot in RAW and it gives me a better quality. Now watch what happens to the sky when I push up the dehaze. So straight away it brings in a lot of detail. I can do the same with the clarity slider and you can see these rays coming through. Don't worry that at this stage it's causing the clothes to look a bit unnatural because once we convert those to black and white they'll look great. I can also change the adjustment of those if I do think it's a bit too strong. That's looking pretty good. So I can close that down now. One of the things that we said earlier is that when we sharpen this area we may get some sharpening artifacts in the sky. Now when you use dehaze and clarity it will create a lot of those sharpening effects as well. So if we look in and I can actually see quite a bit of grain occurring on the sky. So it may be better that if we select the adjustment that we created earlier so that's the sky selected again. What I can do now is I can remove the sharpening from the sky and the way I'll do that is by pulling the sharpening slider down to minus 50. Now if you go beyond minus 50 it actually adds some blurring. If you go less than minus 50 it starts to, oh sorry between minus 50 and zero it will reduce the sharpening that you applied in the sharpening panel. The other thing I can do is I can push the noise reduction up because there is a little bit of noise reduction I was applying and that is reasonable now. So we've got most of our adjustments done. Let's just look at overall if we need any more dehaze. I don't think so. We'll, uh, we'll leave it as it was around 13, 15, something like that. And in terms of clarity, clarity seems to have a nice effect on these rocks but I think I won't push that too far because we've got the structure slider we can use in Silver Effects Pro. The other thing I want to do is just push up the vibrancy slightly and also push up the saturation and the vibrancy will affect the blues in the sky a little bit more. The saturation tends to affect the greens and the yellows in the rocks. So that will make for a good colour response when we get this into the Nick Silver Effects Pro. The sky is looking a little bit purple which tends to happen with the Provia adjustment. I've just reduced it slightly so we increase the greens in the image as well. And you can see how that's brought out the green tones and the yellow tones in the rocks and we'll actually reduce the, the colour of this, the warmth in the temperature, colour temperature so we're going more to a blue. And that's created quite a lot of cyan in the sky but I'm not too worried about that. That looks like a reasonable adjustment now in terms of being able to convert that to black and white. So I'm now going to take this over into Photoshop where I'm going to work on it in Silver Effects Pro. Now one of the reasons I do that is because taking it into Photoshop I then have blending modes and masks that I can also apply. So the way I'm going to do it is just to select open and open as rather than a smart object I'm going to open it just straight into Adobe Photoshop. Here we are now in Photoshop. I should actually say that the reason I didn't select to open this as a smart object is that I always like to keep the background layer as a standard image and instead I'm going to actually duplicate that layer now and I'm going to turn that layer into a smart filter. The reason I use smart filters is because then the adjustment that we create in Nick Silver Effects will still have access to the control points later if we close Nick Silver Effects. If you use just a standard layer that doesn't happen. You lose the control points and you effectively apply the adjustments directly to that layer. Let's go down now and find Silver Effects Pro. Here you can see the warning that you get with Silver Effects Pro just letting you know that you're working on the smart layer. It's just advisory, so click OK when you get that. 
And here we have the adjustment now in Silver Effects Pro. This is the default neutral adjustment. And sometimes it can help you to have a look down the various adjustments here to get ideas of what you might want to create. In this case, I actually have quite a clear idea of what I want to create anyway, so I'm not too worried. Now, before I actually start to adjust using any of these tones, what I like to do is go and look at the color filters. So if I look at a green filter, that usually opens up the greens here whilst darkening the skies. A yellow filter typically does much the same, and you can adjust the strength of that filter here, as well as change the color slightly. And as I move over towards the red, I get quite a nice effect there. Once you've done that, you can then apply some of these filters here. So blue will darken the blue when you go negative. And cyan, which we had quite a lot of in the sky as well, will darken that. And I can also push up the yellows and the greens and the reds that are in the rocks. Immediately now, without going to any of the adjustments at all, we've created quite a, a dramatic effect that's darkened the sky. You can now see the shafts of light coming through. The rocks are a bit light here and we'll darken those in a minute, but overall that's looking quite good. The two sliders I tend to start with are the dynamic brightness and the soft contrast. The dynamic brightness, when you reduce it, it will make the scene darker or brighter. Now at the moment I want to pull that down and that's ca causing my shadows to darken overall. And the soft contrast, if you increase it, you tend to create this contrasty effect. Typically around the shadow areas will go a lot darker. But if you move it to the left, what you'll get is that it opens up shadow detail. So at the moment I'm going to set that to be slightly negative just to open up some of the details and then we can actually push up the actual contrast itself and amplify the blacks in the scene and that will tend to darken the image because what we want to do is create this moody dramatic feel to the image if i amplify whites all it does is lighten everything i don't really want that next i'm going to move on to the mid-tones now if i add in some mid-tone structure that's great but i don't like it affecting the sky too much so I'm just going to reset that and that might be better to actually work on the sky and the rocks separately with, with control points in a minute. So let's reduce the contrast a little bit, it's looking a bit strong. I also want to use these tonality protectors, so I'm going to protect the shadows in the image. So if I move it over to the right you can see the shadow areas here have been protected, stops them from going to pure black. And we've also got the highlight protectors here, which will protect the highlights from becoming too bright. So I just like to add in a little bit of protection there. Let's now work with the control point. And the first control point I'm going to use is one to select this rock down here. And I'll just turn on the mask so you can see the, the selection that's being made. And that's made a reasonable selection of the rock. Notice it's blending in with the other rocks as well. So now we can adjust that. And I'm going to start by adding contrast into the rocks to bring out that gritty feel. And also I'm going to add in some st structure. And that really emphasizes all the grittiness in the rock. I can reduce the brightness as well in that area. And I can also amplify the blacks to really darken it down. The next control point I'm going to add is selecting this area of grass here because it's just too bright at the moment. So again I'll just make sure I've got my a good selection. So that's looking good. So white is what's being selected by the mask, black is not selected. And now I can reduce my brightness in that area quite considerably. I will add in a little bit of structure just to emphasize the texture in the grass and also a little bit of contrast and then I'll actually increase the blacks as well and reduce the whites. 
So I'm happy with that. It's causing though this area of the rock to become a little bit too dark. So I now want a control point on that to prevent it. Now you notice there that as soon as I added the control point, the area lightened up. So if I turn the control point off, you can see it going dark. And what that's doing is this other control point where we've darkened the grass was selecting part of this rock. By applying the new control point, it stops it from actually uh, affecting that area. And now I'm going to add in a bit of contrast in that area, a bit of structure in that area, and I try to amplify the white very slightly. Now the most important area in rock is this one here. Now it was already being selected by this control point, but I want to give it a, a selection of its own and really create a, a, a nice effect on that rock. And the way I'm going to do it is by adding in lots of contrast, lots of structure, and I'm not going actually I'm not going to change the brightness at all, just leave that around there but I am going to amplify the whites in that area and that's to make that area of the rock stand out. I'll now add a selection of the trig point so we can see that there and again contrast to make it stand out amplify the whites there and also add in structure and that really makes the definition of that rock stand out now it's time to work on the clouds. So again, we'll select the sky in the bright area. So I want to try and select some of these rays that are coming through. So that will do it. And I can really boost the contrast there. I will darken the brightness just slightly to give it more emphasis. We'll add in some structure and we'll try to amplify the whites just slightly. And what that's done is it's created these shafts of light or emphasized these shafts of light in the image. Now I can see an edge coming in here around where we've made the selection. So I want to try to protect that a little bit. So I'm going to add in just a control point there and I'm going to duplicate that. So I'm going to hold down Alt on my keyboard and just move it to the other side as well. And that's protected this edge and stopped it from being highlighted. I'm now reasonably happy with the overall look and feel of the image. I now want to finish it, so I do tend to like to play around with the tone curve just at the end. But overall, I don't think we need to do anything there. One of the effects I wanted to add here was a vignette with a lens fall off. And I wanted to create quite a, a strong fall off, but not one that will cause the image to look too unnatural and I'm going to position the center of that onto this rock here and that's looking quite good. One of the things I would like to do is darken down this foreground edge here so I'm going to pick the burn edges and I'm going to use that to actually come in and darken the area. So the strength tells me how dark it's going. The size of it is how, how far into the frame it actually goes. So the more I push the slider over to the right, the higher it goes. The transition is the blending between the two areas. So you can either have a hard transition or you can create a much softer one. So I'm going to go for a, quite a soft transition. And that darkens it down nicely. The side on the left, or the here, of the image is looking a bit darker, sorry, a bit lighter than the side over here. And that balances off nicely. I'm happy with that. And we'll take that back now into Photoshop. We're back now in Photoshop and what we want to do is now add a little bit of dodging and burning. So whilst we've got quite a good image so far, I'm going to emphasize it just that little bit more. The way I like to do this is to create a new layer. I'm 
and we'll call that dodge and burn. And we change the blending mode on the layer to be overlay. Now when you do that you get this fill with overlay neutral colour and you need to check that. And that creates a layer here that's filled with 50% grey. And I'm just going to duplicate that. I've now got two layers, both the same, both grey. One of them I'm going to paint with black, the other one I'm going to paint with white. I've already got my colour palette over here set to be black and white. If you haven't got yours set like that, just press D on your keyboard and it reverts to being black and white. And then you can press X on your keyboard to switch between the two. Select the brush and I'm going to set the opacity to be around 9% and I need to make sure that that's painting in normal mode. Now I can paint with black to darken down some of the areas and I can paint with white to paint to actually lighten areas. So I'm going to start with white and I'm going to use it to lighten the edge of this rock here, the edge of this rock, and also the centre of the trig point a little bit. And this area here has become very dark so I'm going to now lighten this as well. So all I'm doing here is clicking and painting. And because I've got quite a quite a low opacity setting I'm having to make a lot of brush strokes. But that's good because it makes sure that my brush strokes all blend. The other thing I'm using is quite a soft edge on the brush here, so I've got the hardness set at zero. And I can also pick out some of these highlight areas where the shafts of light are coming in. And that just serves to emphasise them a little bit more. I want to put a bit more lightness on the horizon there as well. If I turn off that layer, you can see the subtle effect that the dodging and burning is having. Let's now look to paint with black and we'll darken some of these areas a little bit more. And all I'm trying to do here is emphasize some of the shadows a little bit more. I'm trying to focus the viewer's eye onto the central area of the rock. So Darken that area. I'll probably darken the clouds around the edge more. Now you'll notice I'm actually painting over some of the areas I lightened earlier. And that's because it will still darken the darkest parts of that, the way that I'm using this. And that tends to bring out more of the gritty textures in the rocks or some of the shadows. Let's go back to painting with white and we'll just emphasize some of these points. All I'm doing here is just clicking around in the image. I'm now just going to hold down my control key, select both of those layers and drop them into a folder. So that folder now has both of those layers in there. And the reason I do that is just to turn it off so that you can see the effect of the dodging and burnings had. So even though we came out of the Nick Silver Effects Pro with quite a, a good adjustment, the dodging and burning has actually improved that quite considerably. That then is the complete workflow going from the starting image, which was a dull grey flat image in Lightroom, right the way through Silver Effects Pro, bit of dodging and burning in Photoshop, and we've got the finished image now, which is quite a transformation. I hope you've enjoyed the video and found that useful. I'm Robin Worley. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.